welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Louise Claire Johnson. I'm the author of Behind the Red Door. And in today's video, it's another work day in the life of a writer. We're going to write at my favorite place in the entire world, the Annex Hotel in Toronto. It's kind of like my hidden gem. Hello. Ooh, we got the Beyonce hair. Hello, it's me again. Welcome back to the channel, the vlog. The camera died earlier when I was quickly talking inside the house. So I charged the battery. We're in the car now, as you can obviously see. So yeah, as I was saying, I'm on my way to the Annex Hotel to do some writing. If you saw my writing a book in the desert series, that's where I did the first draft of the book that I'm currently working on. I'm a big outliner, so I always Always have a full complete outline before I start writing that so I have that it's in my backpack beside me here I picked it up from Staples I get it bound and printed there and now I'm basically doing draft two is what I call it really this is like the bulk of the writing taking apart the manuscript it's like taking apart a puzzle figuring out which pieces still work putting them back in the right order moving them around adding new pieces so yeah I would call this the real writing but it's also I guess some people will call it editing I don't know revision draft two that's what I'm doing today at the Annex Hotel and then after a full writing day since I'm already gonna be in the city I'm meeting a couple friends for dinner at a restaurant called Campuchano it is a taco place it's really delicious and then I'll drive home. You're gonna hear the AC turn on. I turned it off so that you could hear me so it wasn't too loud and I turned the car off and then I started sweating in this blazer. It's kind of that weird in between weather. It was cold this morning, now it's hot. I think it's gonna be colder tonight so that's why I wore a blazer. Also to look kind of professional, put together. I'm regretting my choice a little bit. Um, earlier today, I went to F45. I'm pretty tired today. It's kind of the end of the week. I've been getting up early, doing some writing, going to the 7.30 workout class, and then going back to writing. I don't know, I'm just in kind of like a foggy headspace today, but mind over matter, I'm gonna try to get over it. I just keep reminding myself of how lucky I am to have kind of my health. I went through some kind of health stuff in January, February, March. I'm starting to get to the bottom of it. I'm feeling better. I don't know if it's a placebo effect of all the things that I'm trying, but I am feeling better. And then also just looking back at the pandemic and COVID and all of those protocols. We were talking, Jeff and I were talking about our wedding, which were coming up on our two year wedding anniversary and how crazy it was that there was an Atlantic bubble and you had to quarantine for 14 days if you were coming from Nova Scotia or going to Nova Scotia where his family's from. And just kind of, yeah, remembering it's not that long ago but it feels like a long time ago but it also feels like yesterday all of the crazy health protocols I mean COVID is definitely still around but everything is just not as strict I guess technically anyway that's kind of a ramble I don't really have a complete thought on that just the point is I'm trying not to take my health for granted and get up every single day, do the healthy habits and routines that I know make me feel good and productive and just keep working towards getting this book into your hands and continuing to write more and more books. Okay, I'm gonna listen to an audiobook as I drive in. I got this one from the library. It's Elena Ferrante's The Lying Life of Adults and I haven't started it yet. I'm just about to start it, but no better time than while I'm on a drive. Okay. See you guys in Toronto. So I'm just leaving the Annex Hotel. I'm on my way to Campuchano for dinner. I didn't get much footage while I was writing, honestly. I was just kind of like in the flow, um, but it was a great day. Hello. Today I'm moderating my friend Lauren Chamberlain's Toronto book launch. She's already launched her book in New York. It's her sophomore novel. It's called Who We Are Now. Her first book is Friends From Home. You can look her up. She is amazing and I'm on my way to Toronto. It's at Steadfast Brewery tonight. So I'm moderating the event. It's from 7 until 10 30 and then there's a Q&A and a book signing. 
there'll be drinks and food yeah so today i thought it'd be fun to take you behind the scenes for another book launch event i'm going into toronto a little bit earlier i have a couple errands to do so i will take you along with me as well i've already got my backpack on i've got my high heels and the aritzia effortless pant in ivory to switch into later tonight it looks like it could thunderstorm but it's really hot and muggy so i'm wearing shorts right now just to kind of walk around the city it's a little bit risky that i'm wearing the blouse that i'm going to be wearing tonight but to be honest i couldn't fit anything else into my backpack i also have my laptop in there and a bunch of other things because after i finish my errands i'm gonna go to a little coffee shop and do some work before the event starts at seven we're meeting earlier to kind of make sure the mics are all set up everything's good to go these book launch events in person are so fun and a little bit more special i think especially for me because my book was launched during a pandemic when all the bookstores were closed. I couldn't even go into a bookstore to see my book on shelf, let alone have an in-person book launch event. And the same thing for Lauren. Her first book was launched in May 2021. So this is really exciting for her as well to have her second launch in person in a bookstore. Like I said, she already had her US launch in New York, which was so cool at Book Club Bar. And then yet yeah, tonight it's at Steadfast Brewery in Toronto for her Canadian launch. All right, I'm heading into the city, let's go. wedding photos it's only been two years <laughs> it took me that long I'm going to surprise Jeff with that kind of on our anniversary we're doing a whole kind of staycation going out for dinner and two years I think is cotton so we might invest in a new duvet or some new cotton robes I don't know we'll see that could be our gift to each other as well but this is something that we want to put up a gallery wall in our bedroom with some of our wedding photos then there's this one really cool photo I'll show you later. It's black and white that we want to put above our bar. And then there's this other kind of framed one of us. It's muted earth tones of us on the beach. So it's more in color. All the other photos are black and white. And that's going to go framed in our living room. So I'll show you all those later when I'm back home. And I frame them. I got extra frames arrived last night so that'll be a project for tomorrow but annex photo is my absolute favorite place to get photos enlarged blown up printed i used to come here when we lived in the annex and i'm still super loyal to them i know there's probably other places but i was coming into the city anyway and the timing just worked out perfectly and they do such a good job and it's so easy i just do it all online pay online and then pick it up so it's about 3.30 now. I'm gonna go to my old faithful, my usual writing haunt, the Annex Hotel, their lobby bar. I am obsessed with it. I go all the time. I used to go every single day when I lived here. And anytime I'm in the city and I have a chunk of time, it's kind of where I go to write. Do some work for the next, what, couple hours? Two and a half, almost three hours and then head over to Steadfast Brewery for the launch. We'll do a little mic check, and if I have time, I might stop 
for a sushi roll for an early dinner before the event. We'll keep you posted. See you soon, bye. hotel and this is really disgusting but I'm touching up my makeup because I've been running around all day sweating I forgot to bring a hairbrush so this gross mop all my curls came out is kind of what I'm gonna have to deal with and I'm probably gonna get a face full of acne for doing this but I have my hula bronzer and a brush that I shoved in my backpack definitely not healthy to take away the shine and use a brush on my gross skin, but that's what we're gonna do. Also gonna touch up my lipstick. Okay. So I was wearing shorts before, I just changed into my pants as well, but I'll put the heels on on the sidewalk outside of Steadfast Brewing before I go in because I have to get on the subway now. I'm in the annex and I'm going across to Lansdowne, which I think it's the junction. Anyway, it's lands down on Bloor, and then I just walk a little bit down Bloor to a Steadfast Brewery. So I'll put my heels on there. I was gonna get a sushi roll at my favorite place, Sushi on Bloor, but I don't really have time and I'm a little nervous, so I'm not really that hungry. And apparently there's gonna be a lot of food and kind of snacks there, so I'll have something when I get there. Okay, see you soon. This is the unglamorous behind the scenes of moderating a book event. <laughs> okay, so I just left the Annex Hotel on my way to the subway. I wanted to find a spot to kind of sit and practice my cue cards that you saw me write. So I like to type out my questions. Uh, my friend Bryn, when I moderated her book event, she didn't want to see the questions in advance. She wanted her answers to be kind of off the cuff. She didn't want to sound too rehearsed. And then sometimes other people like to see the questions in advance. Like when I used to do my podcast, I used to email out the questions so that people kind of could have an idea and I'm not throwing them off. So I gave Lauren the choice and she said she'd love to see the questions. She didn't have any notes, no notes. And yeah, we're gonna do a little rapid fire at the end. So usually what I do, I print off the questions and then I write them out on cue cards and then just highlight kind of one word because when I'm up there, I can't be looking down at a piece of paper or at cue cards while I'm talking and the conversation has to flow naturally. Also, in case she answers something and I think of another question, you want it to feel like a free flowing conversation between two authors, two friends, but also have a good mix of writing craft questions, kind of her process, her routine, any quirks or rituals, and then also book specific to this current book launch that people are excited to buy it and get their book signed at the end. So yeah, I usually like to memorize my questions because I don't like looking down. I wanna be looking at the author that I'm speaking to out of the audience to make it feel more engaging. So I kinda of try to memorize my questions and highlighting one word like characters, setting, craft, all those kinds of things jogs my memory. Yeah, I don't know, I get a little nervous before I do these kinds of things. Even though it's not about me, this is to celebrate Lauren's book launch. I'm just there to facilitate the discussion. 
and really the onus is on her to do more of the hard work and answer the questions but I do feel a sense of responsibility to make sure that it flows smoothly and she feels comfortable and there's energy in the room it's not stale so yeah these are kind of the things that I think about when I moderate a book event I don't mind public speaking but I definitely still get nervous. I'm human and it's scary standing up there in front of a room full of strangers and kind of being on, but also being authentic. Anyway, so I don't usually have drink. I won't even have like a glass of wine. Well, sometimes I do, but this time I, I'm not gonna have a glass of wine before because I wanna be really clear headed and then afterwards I can celebrate and have a beer or something since it's at, it's at a brewery. All right, I'm gonna head to the subway and head west across town. my very unglamorous changing of the footwear ritual in the middle of the street. Don't worry, my bare feet did not touch the gross sidewalk. I'm very skilled at changing from flip-flops into heels in the middle of the street. It was so cute on the subway. This girl was like, oh, I love your tote bag. Where did you get it? And this is the first time I've been able to say this. I was like, oh, it's mine. I designed these tote bags. And then she was like, oh, it's so cute. It says, because it says reading material, I guess. She liked it. And I was like, okay, that just made me so happy. This isn't to come on here and humble brag, but I just had to note it because that doesn't happen very often. And it was really cool. So I was like, you can go to louiseclairjohnson.com slash the bookshop and purchase your own little tote bag. But I was like, it's a flat fee of shipping, so you might want to get something else to but really upselling her there. Okay, I'm going to head inside now. Thank you. 